Harry Bridge wants to know, favorable matchups are arguably as important as talent when it comes to the playoffs. Who do you think are the nightmare matchups for the top three teams in the each, in each conference come playoff time? Ooh. This is a good question. BJ, I'm going to walk you through the teams and you give me the one team they don't want to face okay. in the first round of the playoffs. The Boston Celtics. If I were them, I wouldn't want to face the Cleveland Cavaliers. Why is that? Okay. Look, I, 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 I say this all the time. Donovan Mitchell at the point guard position, I just don't want to see that. Okay, because but Darius can... Garland will be back. <laughs> so he'll be back to being I, a point guard. Well, he'll be back. But however, you can't argue with the results they got. Mm-hmm. You can't argue. I mean, they've what won? What, what, what are they? The they Cavaliers won, they, are eight they, and yeah, two in their last 10, 10, 10, 26 and 16 okay. up to fourth. Hey, yeah. hey. Do, do you think they're going to move Darius Garland? I, I, I don't know. However, I, it deserves, I'm going to say this. If the question doesn't come up in the meetings, then everyone's not doing their job. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they should trade Darius Garland. But what I am saying is they were eight and two. Eight and two with him at the point guard position. And you yeah, have Mobley put them back. But, but I think Donovan Mitchell's a bigger risk to leave as a free agent or demand a trade uh, than Darius Garner would be. Um, also with Mobley and Allen, Allen's been playing amazing basketball with Mobley out. And it's a similar thing there. They both play the same position, basically. And I don't know about the fit of that team. But I think um, for the Boston Celtics, the nightmare first round matchup is the Miami Heat. Because I don't know what it is about Eric Spolster. He loves going up against those Celtics. And we saw what happened well, I, last year listen, and, and my, a couple Miami, years before and the year before. I'm going to tell you who it else. I mean, I know they, they've they what lost what the last three or four in a row. Yep, the Indiana straight. Pacers. Yeah, the Indiana Pacers would be a bad. I, I think, I don't think that's a seven, six, seven, and eight seeds this year, I think are going to be pretty decent. Well, speaking of the Pacers, for me, the Milwaukee Bucks, their nightmare matchup in the first round is the Indiana Pacers, who have absolutely owned them this season when they faced off against each other, whether it be the in-season tournament but, or but just let's not games. forget, Let's not forget they've made a trade, so this is a different team now. Yes. Yeah, come on. Come on. But, okay, so so who's the nightmare matchup for the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round? I, w- I don't want to face the Cavaliers. That, Again. That's just me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to okay. face the okay. I don't want to face the Cavaliers. I don't I do not want to face the Cavaliers. I'm not afraid of Indiana. Okay. I'm not afraid of Indiana. And, and here's why. Because I don't see anyone now on Indiana's team that can match up with Giannis for seven games. Could you see that before? They had enough bodies. I thought they had bodies. They had enough people to throw at them. See, the, but, the, 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 but, but, a, but here, they, they lost a, Bruce Brown and they gained Siakam. So it's the same here, amount of bodies. Here, okay. Here, here, Unless you think okay, Jordan Wara is moving the needle. Here, Here is the thing that concerns me with the Milwaukee Bucks. Athletically, they are not an athletic team. Yeah, we said this the yesterday. Indi- and the Indiana Pacers play at a very fast pace. I don't think Siakam plays at that pace. That's just my Siakam and Obi Toppin. I don't think Obi Toppin is like a high flyer, vertical player. You're throwing alley oops. I don't see Siakam is more. He's, he catches the ball. He needs his space. He does his thing. Do I think he's athletic? Yes. But I don't see him playing the same level with the same level of athleticism at this stage of his career as Obi Toppin and those guys. So I think that tempo favors the Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Bucks. That's just my personal opinion. Now, Bruce Brown, Bruce Brown and those guys... Yeah, Bruce Brown, right? Yeah, Bruce yeah, Brown. Yeah, Bruce Brown. Yeah, and these guys. I always get him Bruce Bowen. I don't know. I always want to call him Bruce, <laughs> Bruce Brown and those guys, they're athletes. They're, those guys are, like, athletic. Like, it's one thing you don't want to guard as you get as you, as you you mature in this league, is speed and quickness. So I think this is a different team. I think they're going to play different. I don't think they're going to – I don't think their first unit is going to play with the same athleticism – with Bruce Brown and Obi Toppin in it. Now you have, you know, I think you have uh, what's the shooter, Siakam oh, Buddy and, Hill. and Buddy Hill. I think it's a different team now. I think that favors, I think Buddy Hill favors 
Milwaukee. The, the Milwaukee Bucks. So we'll, that's what I see. We'll see what his burner account says about that on Twitter after this show comes out. Uh, if you're the Philadelphia 76ers, who is your nightmare matchup in the first round? You know, the way JoJo's playing, it, I don't think it really matters for him. <laughs> I, I I don't, the, I don't, I, 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 you know what? I'm hoping this year that he gets to, you know, pass what the first round, right? Second it's, round. It's, yeah. It's, second second round. round. Yeah. Get to the second round. I, I I do. I hope so because he has been a dominant force. I mean, he is dominating the game right now. I mean, he's dominating the game. He's not just being good. So I don't I don't think it really matters for him because I whoever he whoever he plays against, probably with the exception of Giannis right now, he is the best player on the floor. You know, I, I don't see a couple of players that you can say match up with him, Giannis and Jokic. Everybody else, I think I think JoJo is just that dominant of a player at this stage of his career. So I don't really think it matters for him and the and the Philadelphia 76ers. Okay. Um, I think this is their best chance to get past the second round. But uh let's look at the Western Conference. Who is the nightmare matchup for the OKC Thunder? You know, my Sacramento Kings, I, I kind of picked them to finish in the upper part mm. of the Western Conference. They haven't lived up to their expectations they have, given they have what not. they did last season. They they have not. Kind of maintained that level. So I'm going to say this because, you know, I, again, I, I just don't like their matchup, even though they haven't been playing well throughout the course of the year. They've kind of been up and down. It's the New Orleans Pelicans. The, the Pelicans still are a problem. And I still think that Brandon Ingram and Zion – that's just a, a matchup nightmare for anybody. Mm -hmm. That's a load to have to be able to guard those two guys along with CJ McCullough and Valanchunas and Herb Jones and all those guys. I, I just think they have, they've been underperforming. However, this team is very capable. They're very, very capable. And I think they may be better the way their team is constructed. They may be better in the playoffs than they are during the regular season. I hope whatever so. there is. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. so um, I, I'm, I wouldn't, if I was OKC, that's one team I definitely wouldn't want to play just because of their size, athletic ability. But I wouldn't want to play them in the playoffs no matter who who, who they're matching up against. I think the one, the only problem maybe that OKC have is the lack of experience in postseason. You know, they've never really been there. So I think seeing someone like LeBron James in the first round and the way he perceives the game and the way he can pick it apart and all his experience in the playoffs. Um, and then Chet Holmgren having to see Anthony Davis um, with all of his experience as well might be a little tricky. I'm not saying that the Lakes would win. I don't think the Lakes would win that matchup, but I just think it might give them a little scare. Who is the nightmare matchup for the Timberwolves here? Well, when you start, if they're, they finish first or second, they're going to probably see Dallas. They're probably going to see... New Orleans, I, I would say Dallas. I would even say the Lakers. You know, I would I would say the Lakers. Um, but I, I, you know what, Minnesota, I like their team. I I I, I like their team. Well, I, I like I, their size. I, I think for the for the Timberwolves, it would probably be more the Kings for them because the way the Kings play, the speed at which they play, and also Sabonis operating away from the basket area, Rudy Gobert having to get up and down. And then be pulled away from the basket to guard on those handoffs that they run with Sabonis. That could be an interesting one. Yeah. I, well, I I think if Sacramento plays, if Sacramento plays the Minnesota Timberwolves, I think the size will eventually affect Sacramento. I mean, Harrison Barnes playing against Cat and Rudy Gobert. I just mm. they're just overwhelmed. Okay, unless they decide to go and utilize. JaVale McGee or their other bigs. Okay. I just think at some point the lack of size and how they are committed to playing small. I mean, Harrison Barnes and Kenyon and, and, and the Murray kid <laughs> versus, you know, Kat and, 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 and their players. I, I just don't think that's a good matchup for them. However, they did lose the other night to the Charlotte Hornets and they went small. So anything's possible. But I'm going to say I think size probably wins out in a playoff series. And, and if there's one thing that you see with this Sacramento team that's 
kind of been bothersome with them for the last year or a year and a half now is size. They haven't figured out how to play against bigger, stronger athletic players. Okay, so the Denver Nuggets currently third. Is there a nightmare team for them? Hey, I just, hey, no, you, you, no, no. Jokic, listen, again, I, Jokic, Embiid, and Giannis, hey, you, you, you're going to have to play lights out to beat those guys, okay? Mm-hmm. Those, those guys are going to win two. They're going to win two, possibly three games by themselves in a series, okay? And if you get to a game seven, they'll probably win it. They'll just win the game outright. That they're both all three of those guys are that good. So Jokic, just get him there and he'll do the rest. So I don't think I don't see any problems with him, but you're gonna have to play lights out as a team to beat him. 